In this video, I'm going to be testing out the Aintree Food Grinder, a stand mixer attachment that is compatible with the KitchenAid stand mixer and also some models of the Cuisine Art stand mixer. According to the box, it will grind meat, vegetables, hard cheeses, spices, and even more. So stick with me and we're going to test some of these out. Inside the box, you will find the grinder attachment, a one inch and a two inch sausage tube, a plastic blade, two steel blades, a coarse plate and a fine plate for grinding. Assemble and disassemble is fairly straightforward. Unscrew the ring, take out the plate. Inside you'll see the steel blade. Remove that and inside will be the grinding worm. For grinding, pop in the steel blade, pop on the plate and then secure it into place with the ring. Now the trick here is not to tighten it too tight and I'll show you why a little later in the video. And the food pusher has a wrench on the other end to help you loosen the ring if you need to. To use the sausage tubes, you're going to take out the metal blade and you're going to put in the plastic blade. Choose what size you want to make, pop it on top and then secure it with the ring. And if you're new to my channel, do consider subscribing. I try my best to bring out videos every week. And it also comes with a cleaning brush. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to my KitchenAid stand mixer. I'm using the Ultra Power Plus model. I'll leave a link to my video in the description below if you guys wanna check out the features on this model. Okay, so my meat is ready and cut into cubes. I've switched my machine onto speed setting 4, but I found that speed 6 was much better and much faster. Okay, so here we go. Use your food pusher to push the meat down. And by the way, I'm using the fine plate. Let's take a look inside. So just keep on pushing that all the way down until it all clears. There you go. So it's doing a fairly good job of mincing it very fine. I like my meat finely ground. So let's open it up and you'll see some chunky pieces stuck on the ring and on the blade. So you might have to just chop these up with a knife. done a fairly decent job of mincing the meat. On to the next one I'm going to grind some black pepper. Let's switch it on and pop in the whole black pepper. So with the first handful I had it on speed setting 4 but I noticed that it was coming out fairly slow. So for the second handful I moved it up to speed 6 and it moved a lot faster and it seemed to grind a lot better. The only downside to having it on higher speed is it will spit it out pretty fast and it'll kind of splatter all over your counter. So I use the fine plate and you can see that it is still pretty coarse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it through the grinder again and I'm going to see if it comes out a little bit more finer. So after a second round through the grinder, you can see the results. The first grind is on the left hand side and the second grind is on the right hand side. And it has made it a little bit more finer. So I wanted to do a test of some of the bigger spices like cinnamon, cloves, cumin 
um, and some others that are thrown in there just to really test out the machine. So I popped it all in and unfortunately it didn't go as well as I had hoped, which is totally down to my own fault, which I realized later on after reading the tips, uh, which I will leave at the end as well of this video. But it did say not to tighten the ring too tight, otherwise it puts a lot of pressure on the grinding machine. So I think that's what happened is when I emptied out the peppercorns, and I closed the ring back on. I think I may have tightened it a little bit too tight. I tried to use the wrench to open it and I just couldn't open it up. If you guys are ever in a situation where you can't um, loosen the ring, because it's made of plastic, you can run it under hot water and it will just contract the plastic and eventually you should be able to loosen it and open it up. If anybody is interested in knowing how that turns out, then do leave a comment below. Or if anybody else has tried it out, then also let us know in the comments below. So lastly, I really wanted to see how the cheese would turn out. So I'm gonna share that with you guys too. I'm just using some regular cheddar cheese here. Again, I'm gonna put it on a higher speed. So I'm gonna use speed setting six. And it's just gonna come out like spaghetti. And I think my kids would just love this. Okay, just push it down with the food pusher. And here's the results. So let's open it up and take out what's left inside. And the plate's really stuck in there. There we go. Oh, and you can see all the cheese just gathered all at the end there. I'm gonna have to scoop it all out with my knife. It's turned it into like a spread. Yeah, I don't think I wanna be using this for my cheese. I think I'm gonna stick with my shredder attachment that I have for my KitchenAid. If you guys wanna check that video out, I'll leave a link to the video in the description. I did, however, use the fine grinding plate, but I think I should have used the coarse grinding plate. Since I'm not too keen on doing cheese in the grinding machine, I don't think I'm gonna be doing it again. If anybody else has used it with the coarse grinding plate, please do let us know in the comments below if it does turn out better. And if anyone has any ideas or tips on the best types of cheeses to use, then please do share with us in the comments below. And also don't forget to give this video a like if you found it useful. Overall, I would say it's a good investment for grinding meat, uh, making sausages, grinding vegetables, spices even. And just to let you guys know, I got this when it was half price. So I got it for like 25 bucks on Amazon. Uh, again, I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to check out the rest of the features and maybe in one of the sales you guys will be able to get a good deal too. And also just to share with you, you'll be able to find this model with uh, some extra grinding plates. This is also what I found on Amazon. There may be a slightly different price range, but uh, you guys should just definitely check it out if you're interested in having any of the other grinding plates. And like I mentioned before, reading up on some tips on the product listing itself, Tip number two, they have recommend that the attachment head is left a little loose while grinding. If you tighten it too much, it won't allow the shaft to move freely, which will put stress on the mixer motor. So these are just some handy tips to have on hand when you're using this product. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope to catch you in the next video.